All right. So today I just want to do an intro to Reactive Utils in the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Now, if you're not familiar with it, it was introduced in version 4.23. Reactive Utils will eventually replace Watch Utils. Now, if you haven't used Watch Utils, it's a utility module in the API that you can use to work with the accessor of the API. And there's a ton of stuff about there out there about accessors in the API. Basically, it allows you to watch for property changes and stuff. Uh, so Reactive Utils is just more of a um, it gives you a bit more control over everything you can you can watch, right? So for example, if we look at um, real quickly, I'll show you watch utils. There's a lot of different methods for watch utils, right? So we have like uh, we have when defined, when defined once, when equal, when equal once, and so on and so forth. All these different really fine grain utility methods that you could use with watching for properties and their different values and when things change. But reactive utils, if you look at this, there's only a handful of functions available to you. That's because now you get much more fine grained control over what it is you want to do. There's even a reactive util for events. And we'll look at how to watch that. All right now, there's a really great sample in the API about watching for property changes with reactive utils. And then you can move this around, get the current extent, the previous extent as the scale changes and stuff. And it's basically going to talk about some pretty cool stuff you can do with it. One of the really cool things is that you can actually watch for array values to change, right? So you're observing or if properties in the array are changing. And that's not really something you could do before with the API. We didn't really have a way that you could use like um, collection to watch for, uh, you know, that kind of fine grained control. Like you could watch for when things are being added or removed from the array, but you really didn't know when they were changed in the array, right? Now you can. You can even take a collection There's a good example down here and like the with the layers and watch for when the visibility of layer changes. And, you know, if you want to find out when they're all visible, um, then you'll know. Right. So it's a really good way to do it. So let's just give do a quick intro to how you might want to start using watch utils in your apps today. Highly recommend you read the doc and go over this particular sample. It's a really, really cool sample. There's a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, check that out. But let's take a look at just some basic things you could do today. OK, so start off with uh, I'm just going to take a look at a few quick things you can do. Right. So right off the bat, um, there's a really cool util here when. Right. So watches the value returned by the get value. Right. So that's going to be this expression here and calls the callback when it becomes truthy. Right. So like view dot when web map dot when a layer dot when you can use this now. So how would something like that look? So let's go ahead and bring in reactive utils here. OK, so I'm going to bring in Esri for reactive utils. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in the when function. So in this particular application, I'm doing a view.when. So I'm going to go ahead and change this a bit. Let's remove this promise here. So we're going to say when. Now I need a getter uh, function. So you uh, pretty much get, it's going to be an expression that's going to get the truthy value for me. So in this case, that's going to be view.ready. So when view.ready is true, then it's going to go ahead and run this function. So we'll just go ahead and let's put a console.log here so you know that it is being run. And we'll just say view ready and say view.ready. That's that in there. Let's open up our console here and refresh. And there we go. View ready true and the app still works just as we expect it to. Awesome. OK, so what is some other things you can do? So that's a, a truthy value right now. Let's say that one of the popular things you want to do is you want to know when the view is done being updated, right? So when and the view being ready just means that it's ready for you to work with. You can start uh, adding layers. Um, well, no, in this case here, we create the dot density renderer because we need to get some values off of the view and stuff. Um, we're going to create a feature layer and yeah, we add it to the map and so on and so forth, right? So, OK. Uh, it's usually a good idea to wait for the view to be ready before start doing stuff. You don't necessarily have to all the time, like adding widgets and stuff, but it's kind of a good idea. Anyway, so if I want to know when the view is done drawing, like it's I've added a layer, I'm, I've brought the data in, and I want to know when the entire 
map is ready and visually available for me to use, right? So now what I can do is I can say when, and the first expression I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back, oops, I always do that here. Um, so a view.update, but I only care about, remember this, when is a truthy value? So I don't wanna know when the view is updating because that means that data is being fetched and drawn and things are happening, right? I want to know when that stops. So when view updating the inverse of view updates, right? So now I can do is I can go ahead and say that here. I'll just console dot log. I'm gonna say view done update. All right, let's go ahead and like that. Let's go ahead and refresh. View done updating. Now if I zoom in view done updating again, right? So every time I interact with the map, it's going to start to update and it's going to finish update. So on and so forth, right? Great. Awesome. Um, let's see here. Now, what if I only want that to happen once? Well, there's a third option in the utils here under watch options. That means you can have an initial value, right? So it's going to fire the callback immediately after it's initialized. If the necessary conditions are met, Sometimes you might want this, sometimes you might not. Um, where the fire the callback synchronously on the next tick. I don't really use this. I'm sure there's use cases for it, but I just never really use it. Uh, or once. Once is pretty cool. There's also an equality function um, to check where two values are the same. Um, I, don't, I haven't used this yet. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I'm sure there's usefulness for it, or else it wouldn't be there. We probably use a lot of these internally in the API. So, yeah. Um, it's like when equals or something like that. Could be. I haven't really tried it yet. Uh, so once. Maybe I only want this to happen one time. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so just going to interrupt myself here for a second. If you didn't notice, there's also a when once method. So I don't actually have to pass a uh, the option to only run this um, expression once. You could use when once and it'll return a promise. And then you can just execute whatever it is you want to execute when that when once is done. That might be a better choice in some situations. Or maybe you want the when and the optional run that once yourself. It's completely up to you. But this helper is there and it is promise based. So you might want to go with this. Uh, sorry for my overlooking that in the original video. <laughs> Thanks. So instead of saying view done updating every time. So pass the option once. Refresh. View ready, view done updating. And as I zoom in again, it does not gonna fire anymore. Right? So no more view updating. So that's when. Now, what about um, something like on? So on is useful because now you can use on to work with events. So instead of saying uh, view dot on click, I can just say on like so. The first expression is gonna bring back the view. Next expression is going to well, actually no, not the expression. It's going to be click. And then what happens on the click? So I get my event and I'll console.log that event. Refresh this. I click on the map. And there is my click event. Now most of the time I don't care about all the other data, I usually want the map point. That's not really the case. I might want the X and the Y because I'm gonna use this with hit tests or something like that. But most of the time for myself, I'm usually interested in the uh, map point because I'm gonna use this um, value in like geometry engine or a query or something like that. So run this and there we go. There is my map point, all right, type point. There you go. So this gives you a bit more fine grained control over what it is that you want to do using the, these expressions. All right, so let's check out uh, another one. So, I mean, there's once, uh, which, you know, it's fine. So this could be promise based. So it's like if you only want to run this once, but you still want the promise, you can handle it. Instead of passing the third option run once. Same for when once, it's going to be the same situation there. 
uh, but maybe I want to use watch, right? So this is going to work a lot like the watch utils would. So if, uh, so it's going to, all of the properties are accessed. So view.basemap.title, we show that one. Sorry, yeah, view.map.basemap.title. We show that one a lot. If any of those change, then this expression is going to return those, those um, properties get accessed, and it's going to run the callback again. So it tracks any properties accessed when getting the value and calls a callback when any of them change. And this goes for an array as well. So let's do something like, um, I don't know, let's see what's a good one here. Uh, let's bring in watch here. And maybe we want to watch the scale, right? So I'm going to do a watch. And I'm interested in the view.scale. And I'm just going to go ahead and log that out. There we go. So you see, you get all the intermediate uh, scales as well when you do this. Um, and then maybe, okay, let's do the example I think we saw. So it was a what? View.scale and view.extent. Uh, but in this case here, I really just care about uh, the view or the scale. So we'll just log them both out. Yeah, so they're both getting logged out at the same time because they're both changing, which is what you'd expect to see. Now, in this case here, you notice the scale is not changing, but the extent is changing. So clear that. And yeah, you get all the intermediates as well. So I probably wouldn't typically get scale or extent uh, at this fine grain of level. I probably do it on the view updating and grab my scale and extent at that point. Um, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> that might be something I want to do. And actually, what I'm really going to get is I'm going to get the uh, scale and the extent here. So let's go ahead and simplify this to the scale and the extent. Yeah, there we go. So those mean the callback values. And if we look at the doc here and the watch callback, we get the new value and the old value. And you can just compare them both. So uh, let's just say that, uh, I wonder if this will work. Let's try this here. So let's just say that uh, da, da, da. if old scale if scale not equal to old scale then log this out. So let's see if this does what I expect it to do. So if I pan the map around, it's not going to log it out. But if I zoom in, it will. Because the scale is the same if I just pan the map. But if I zoom out, the scale is different, so it's going to go and log it out. So you can do stuff like that. Um, the example here for the property changes is going to show you a lot more of that and some uh, pretty good use cases. So if we look at this particular sample... Like I said, this one's going to do a pretty, really good job of showing you how to take advantage of the reactive utils to do some cool stuff. So we're watching for what, stationary, the extent, and the scale. Uh, we're going to compare stationary here to make sure that uh, the old value, you know, yeah, so if it was stationary or not, and it's going to do old extent equal extent, old scale equal scale, blah, blah, blah. So we can get the previous one. Um, pan around here. There we go. Uh, so the current scale, and somewhere in here, there was a previous. Oh, here we go. Previous extent. So we have the previous extent there. And there's more reactive utils here for the layers to so get all the layers are visible or not. But yeah, there's a there's a lot you can do. So you, you can see that you get a lot bit a lot more fine grained control over the properties that you're watching and that you're accessing, and even the events that you're listening for using the reactive utils. So this is really kind of something you're going to want to start diving into, learning how to use. There'll be some more doc for this at 424. Um, 
like some snippets of stuff to kind of help you out a bit more. But like I said, this sample does a really great job of introducing you to it um, and just kind of showing you how you can take advantage of it now. This is going to replace watch utils in the future. So just be prepared for that if you're using watch utils now and get familiar with it, right? So uh, don't forget, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. You know how to get a hold of me. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Appreciate it. Thank you. I just want to let you know that I've started a new podcast called The Bounding Box, where I'll be talking about geo development, web development, and everything in between. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and plenty of other places that you can find podcasts. Um, there are a few episodes available now. We are in a bi-weekly schedule, so every other week on Sunday evening or Monday morning, just kind of depending uh, how the day goes. Um, I'll be having guests on um, talking about various topics, so please tune in, please subscribe, and let me know what you think. Thank you.